Roll for Crit is made possible thanks to the support of viewers like you and our patrons on our Patreon page. You can become a patron for just $1 a month at patreon.com slash roll for crit. A new year is dawning. We are leaving 2020 behind us and we are looking forward to the future. In this video, we are going to be talking about our most anticipated board games that will be released, hopefully, in the year 2021. It's a long list. There's a lot of games, uh, plenty of games that were scheduled for release last year but got pushed for one reason or another, probably dozens of reasons. <laughs> I was going to say, you said we're leaving 2020 behind, but it seems we're taking some of our predictions from then to this one as well. <laughs> yeah, well, they weren't meant to be predictions back then. Not predictions, sorry. <laughs> they were supposed to be things that were actually <laughs> happening, uh, but they turned out to not be true. As is often the case, that's just how it goes with the board game industry and any industry uh, in the way the world is right now. But we are going to be briefly jumping through uh, dozens and dozens of games. So this will hopefully give you an idea of what's coming out this year from a bunch of different companies, at least as much as we can cover in one video without going too, too long and know what you have to look forward to. We're gonna start off with some groupings by publisher and then jump into some games that are from all over the place. So let's start off, Will, what are we, what are we kicking off with that we're looking forward to this year? We're gonna start off with AEG because that's how the alphabet works. Now, there are some very anticipated titles for already existing lines in their series. The big one obviously being Smash Up with the Goblins one, which I'm excited for because it sounds very cool with the randomness, but also Marvel, I know a lot of people are excited about. But they've also got some games that are new. We've got Dead Reckoning, which is actually a pirate game we previewed, which was really cool and fun. They got Sheepy Time, which is sort of about counting sheep and trying to make sure you press your luck and not bring nightmares to people, as well as Cubitos, which is all about a cube race, because cubes are always what you want to bring to a race, not wheels. <laughs> yeah, cubes cubes are going to be the new wheels in 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dead Reckoning is definitely one to look out for. Uh, it's a really uh, innovative kind of 4X style pirate game. And I'm, I am still curious to see how they incorporate Marvel into the world of Smash Up exactly and if it's successful. We've been seeing some be. spoilers here and there. You can search them out if you're curious, but I'm going to wait until we see the full product to find out like how which group works and how they're supposed to interact. Yeah. Uh, next up, we'll go on to Arcane Wonders, who has a few games coming up. Foundations of Rome was a big one on Kickstarter and a big one physically in real life. It's a city building game with huge minis for the different buildings, uh, you know, depending on how you arrange your city. Uh, then there is Freedom 5, which they're co-publishing with Greater Than Games. This is based in the Sentinel Comics universe from Sentinels of the Multiverse. So it's a superhero game, but taking those uh, made up superheroes, all superheroes are made up, but these were extra <laughs> made up, uh, taking them into a new a new place, a new type of genre, uh, as opposed to just a cooperative card game. Now you've got a board as well. Then there's Furnace, which is one that we got to review a, sort of an international copy of. Arcane Wonders is doing the localization, so we haven't seen what it's going to look like just yet, but this is an engine building slash auction game about capitalism and, and such. You're trying to build the best engine by all the factories up to get resources. And one that they uh, are just putting out very, very shortly is a game called Sherlock 13, they're localizing this one, and I'm pretty fascinated by this one. I'm excited to try it out because it sounds sort of like a combination of like a game like Werewolf and Guess Who, where one player has is wearing a disguise and all the other players are detectives and they have to ask each other questions to figure out you know, do you have this piece of the disguise? And they have to find out which pieces the, the culprit is wearing and who they really are. I mean, you know, I'm very easily hooked on whenever someone says, hey, Sherlock Holmes is in this, or in the title. <laughs> yeah. But moving on, now this one is going to be a little bit harder for some people to get because if you're interested in these games, well, you probably need to back them before 2021, and that's games from Awakened Realms. Most of their games come exclusively from Kickstarter, so if you didn't back them then, then it's a little hard to get your hands on, at least not without paying a much higher price. But moving on to that, we've got The Great Wall, which is actually based on The Great Wall of China, which is 
seems to be a bit more toned down compared to the other games in terms of fantasy. But you still have amazing warriors and miniatures. It's almost, I feel like, a trade of their games. You're going to get crazy miniatures with their games. So that's a cool one to take a look out for. We've also got ISS Vanguard, which I think just started or ended like back in the end of 2020. So it'd be impressive if we see this come out in 2021, but that's what's supposedly slated to come out. So it is a more sci-fi theme. So I'm really curious how that turns out. And then of course, Nemesis Lockdown is a standalone, but also could be mixed with the previous Nemesis game. It's all about aliens and maybe possibly hidden traitors and finding out who's with you and against you and trying to make it out alive. Yeah, ISS Vanguard is one we kind of missed out on because it came out at a time when we were busy with a lot of other things and weren't covering crowdfunding things as much. But that's going to be a really big, crazy one. I know we haven't had the chance to play Etherfields yet. Some people were disappointed with it, but from the same designer. Awaken Realms always has, if nothing else, games worth looking at because they're often huge and complex but in beautiful and interesting ways so uh, i'm definitely interested to at least take a look at all of these titles uh, now there are a few coming from dr finn's games in fact there are four that were all part of one kickstarter that we thought we would highlight for you right now two of them we got to play those are nanga parbat which is or parbat which is a mountain climbing game and mining colony which is about uh, mining creating a new colony on uh, another planet both very different styles of games and alongside those two you have a butterfly garden and biblios quill and parchment which is a roll and write version of biblios which is I'd say a, probably the most famous Dr. Finn game. We really enjoyed the two that we played, and I think it's a nice collection of smaller games that still have a bit of depth to them. So if you if you have enjoyed any from Dr. Finn in the past, or like that style of game, there's a collection that's probably worth looking for. Now we're going to hit one of the biggest games around that I feel like we always like talking about. That's Fantasy Flight Games. Now, of course, there's always the LCGs for whatever you're looking for. For Jonathan and me personally, I know I'm looking forward to finishing off the Innsmouth cycle. Jonathan's got plenty of Marvel Champions expansions, including Marvel Champions Galaxy's Most Wanted, which is based around the, well, Guardians of the Galaxy. But we've also got some other interesting titles. We've got the Key Forge expansion, Dark Tidings, which is very interesting. It sort of had like dark reflecting versions of cards, so it's not simply just unique decks, but there could be unique versions of car of other cards as well. We've also got the X-Men game, X-Men Mutant Insurrection, which seems to be a heavy dice game. And then, of course, how could we forget the newest version of Descent, Descent Legends of the Dark. This seems to be the first chapter, I guess would be the best way to say it, of this third edition. And then it's unlike the last one, it's going to be fully cooperative. I think that's obviously not only just the big one for Fantasy Flight, but probably one of the biggest expected ones for the year for many people. Yeah, I think they're calling them acts, maybe. Acts, how, that's how the word, yeah. How they're treating it, yeah. But yes, uh, certainly that is one of the, pr- probably one of the top three most anticipated games by most people, myself included, for the year. Um, pretty excited to see the new Marvel Champion stuff. Guardians of the Galaxy, I think, is going to be a lot of fun, as well as Key Forge, which had some interesting new ideas in it. X-Men, a bit of a mystery. I don't know if we're going to, we'll see how much we like that one, but... It's something, but we'll see. Hopefully Fantasy Flight has a few more surprises up its sleeve this year. Uh, Moving on, we've got a couple of products from Level 99 Games. Bullet is a take on the bullet shoot-em-up genre of video game, but with kind of a puzzle game-esque twist where players are in real time uh, adding tokens and moving them down a track to sort of mimic that feel of falling at you and you have to eliminate them in a certain amount of time. And then they have a new expansion for Millennium Blades Collusion with a whole bunch of new cards for that game, which is all about uh, taking the collectible card game genre and turning every aspect of it, the playing and the collecting, into a game all of its own. Uh, I, I know you must be looking forward to, to that one because I know you're a fan of Millennium Blades. And we were both a fan of Bullet as well when we got to preview it. No, uh, Bullet was an absolute blast, pun intended. And I'm excited to see the physical version of that, the final copy of it. And I, will, I won't lie, I'm a little happy about the Money and Blades one because if I recall correctly, it is sort of like the final chapter. I can be like, it is complete. 
It is done. <laughs> That's what you want. <laughs> yeah. We like completion here at Roll for Crit. <laughs> yes. But not everything complete. And Pandasaurus is not done with their games either. In fact, one of their biggest series is getting two new additions to it. Not expansions. They're actually two new games in the line. That's Dinosaur Island Rar and Right, which is the... Well, you can guess, roll and write version of Dinosaur Island. But we're also getting Dinosaur World. I have no idea what that title is referring to. But it's a bigger, better park version of the Dinosaur Island parks. And it has tile laying ins instead of just the regular squares. And, of course, getting DNA. A huge fan of Dinosaur Island. One of my favorite games. Yeah, both, I think, interesting. I mean, Dinosaur Island was a big hit. So we'll see if they can maintain that level of success with these. And if... Uh... You know, hopefully they do enough. I mean, Ron's a rolling right, so that's pretty different. But hopefully World <laughs> will feel like its own thing or it might just be bigger and better. I don't know, but it'll be interesting to see. Portal Games, a company we really like, has some new stuff, including a new standalone take on their detective a modern crime board game series, which is a co-op deduction game where you're trying to solve a mystery by yourself or with friends. This new one is called Vienna Connection, and it takes place during the Cold War based on that same gameplay, but has some new tweaks to it to make it special. I know there's stuff where you're going to be like solving code and other little twists here and there. So looking forward to see how that goes. Robinson Crusoe also has a new supplement for it, which is the, the Book of Adventures. And this includes every existing scenario for the Robinson Crusoe game, plus some new ones all in a book and uh, categorized by level of difficulty and player count and all kinds of things like that. So it'll be some an easy way for you to find all kinds of different ways to play Robinson Crusoe, which is another one of our favorite games. So that'll just be something to fun to look through, maybe even, even if you aren't able to play it all of the time. And they also have Stronghold Undead 2nd Edition coming out. We got to try the preview version of this. Uh, it's a two-player battle game where you just have two massive armies and you're going at it. Portal Games tends to always hit out of the park usually for us. We really like their games. So obviously we're excited for these. I do want to do a quick shout out that after you watch this video, after, go check out their channel because they post a lot of cool stuff and like news videos that are crazy and I don't think they get enough views on there that they deserve. Well, there you go. <laughs> Shout out for Portal Games. <laughs> they need all the help they can get, folks. <laughs> Moving on, we're going to talk about Queen's Games, which we actually did an interview with about their Stefan Feld collection. Then the beautiful series of games are actually all designed to look nice together on a shelf, whether you have the regular or I believe they had collector's editions, if I'm recalling correctly. Yeah. They have like Hamburg, Amsterdam. It's... Yeah, they, they look like really pretty games. Some of them are brand new. Some of them are sort of reworkings, I think, of older games. But uh, we'll see how many from the collection either hit Kickstarter this year or are put into retail. Worth taking a look at if you like, if you're just a fan of those types of Euro games in general. Renegade Game Studios. They always have about 400 games every year that are coming out. But uh, some will mention, of course, they're co-publishing the new Paladins of the West Kingdom expansion, City of Crowns, uh, one of our favorite games from last year. So this is going to add uh, new boards, new cards, new abilities and things for that uh, worker placement game, which is a great take on the genre. They've got the Power Rangers deck building game. So... Uh, pretty much that game was designed for you, Will. <laughs> That's <laughs> your two favorite things in the world, I think, uh, put together into one. I mean, I, don't, I think that it's self-explanatory. I don't really need to explain what that game is. No, no, no. no. All right. For the rest of this video, I'm going to go into great detail about it because I played it. And no, we're yeah, here to yeah, hear about the other okay. guys. They also have Scott Pilgrim Miniatures the World, the Scott Pilgrim Miniatures fighting game uh, that was on Kickstarter and I think will be either in limited quantity or only through their website if, if you really want to get your hands on it, especially with like the painted minis and stuff. I'm not, that one might be harder to find. They have a couple of games based on their RPG line uh, for kids on bikes. There's the Snallygaster situation. And for kids on brooms, there's Duel of Wands. Uh, two different takes on this. Uh, on One is a, an 80s sci-fi supernatural setting. And the other one is a dueling card game of magic and wizards, students of magic. And finally, there's Vampire the Masquerade Rivals, 
the expandable card game based on the Vampire the Masquerade property. This one we also got the demo digital version of, and it's got a lot of, uh, you know, cutthroat battling as well as intrigue and planting secrets here and there, going after different rivals uh, in this uh, multiplayer competitive card game. Pretty cool one to look at. There's probably so many more games that we don't even know about or just can't mention. They Renegade does a lot. They, <laughs> yes, they, they, they sure Their do. strategy is just throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. And a lot of it usually sticks to, that is to true. their credit. To their credit. <laughs> Sometimes games go under the radar and they just disappear and seem to get lost in time. Luckily, Restoration Games are able to pull some of these out of the sands of time and, well, restore them. And there are plenty of games there, but one of the biggest ones that I'm sure, once again, is going to be big on a lot of people's list, at least to talk about, is Return to the Dark Tower. Sorry, Return to Dark Tower. There's no the. That's right. This is a game based on the original Dark Tower, which is this, it's one of those games from the, you know, the 90s, 80s, where it's like big electronic device in the center. And I, I'm very excited to see how that turns out. But they, of course, there's more than just that. They parted up with Mondo a while ago for the Unmatched series. There's going to be another Jurassic Park one, this one featuring the T-Rex versus Sattler. I'm excited for that, obviously, because T-Rex. But I know a lot more people are probably excited for the Marvel ones. There's multiple box sets, each one with different packs of, well, mostly heroes. The one I'm most excited about does have the villain because I do think that's cool. It's Daredevil and Elektra as well as Bullseye. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to Return to Dark Tower, which, uh, you know, it's a Kickstarter game. It was supposed to come out last year, but it's a big, complicated one. So uh, hopefully that game is worthy enough to live up to the hype as well. Uh, now, Thunderworks Games has one of our favorite wide-reaching series, and that's the Role Player series. And in that, they have two new additions. Role Player Adventures is a new r r RPG board game hybrid kind of game. We got to play through some of the first sections of it, and it's a really cool take on a fantasy RPG setting with storytelling uh, and choices you have to make as you go, uh, as well as a dice placement battle system. So there's there are actual mechanics in place that are more like a traditional board game. And they also have a new expansion for the Cartographer's Roll and Write, and that is called Heroes. And this adds some new stuff to it, new, new ways to mess with your friends, as well as potentially... Uh, uh, prevent your friends from messing with you, new maps and goals and things. Uh, were the additions that I'm, I'm excited to see because that's a game that uh, you could add a lot to, a lot of variability that will give it more longevity. Every single game I feel in the role player series has been a darling for us. Take a look at the ones that are out now while you're waiting for these. They're all great. Obviously, there are so many more games coming out. Those are just the easiest ones we were able to group up by publisher. So now we're going to go through, I was about to say, a few games, but I think it's more than a few. We still have probably more <laughs> than half of our list to go, so buckle in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a long ride. I hope you got a nice drink with you. So once again, going strictly by alphabetical order, because that's the easiest way to sort these games. We're going to look at 101 Odysseys. Very cute story campaign-like game. I think while making this list, Jonathan, you you commented on like, there are so many campaign, like long games. This one yeah. feels a bit more lighthearted, I recall. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the name obviously harkens to mind, uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights. So I, I think it's may, hopefully we'll have some of that kind of lighthearted adventure vibe to it. Certainly not the last narrative campaign game on our list. Speaking of which, the next one falls under that category, and that's Aeon's Trespass Odyssey. Another Odyssey. Now, this one is a little bit darker in which that these primordials have burst out in ancient Greece and have killed the entire Olympic pantheon. You are sort of uh, Greece's last hope, trying to find and tame Titan to battle these horrific beasts. This next one is a little bit smaller than those. And that's Agropolis, and I'm pretty sure I just butchered that. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan, just, would you like to say it? Just Agropolis. <laughs> Thank you. Now, this is actually part of the Wallet Game series, and I think now there's 70-ish? There's, like yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Yeah, there are a lot. It's all about laying out your cards and these connecting roads and these farmlands and trying to get points, and there'll be different goals each time. I didn't get the chance to play Sprawlopolis, but I am going to get my hands on that as well as this new one. And you can also mix them together if you want. I'm sure they're going to, they usually have like a new wallet game 
it feels like every other week on Kickstarter, they, they make a bunch of them. So I'm sure there'll be plenty more to look forward to, too, if you enjoy that style. Alder Quest was another Kickstarter game in which there is a tournament of seasons and you are all playing as different guilds of animals trying to fight and win this tournament. Uh, I love the look of it. It's from Rock Manor games, who I think are, are pretty good. And um, it, you know, reminds, of course, it reminds me of Everdell, which also has a big 3D tree in the middle of it. I, I just, I'm a sucker for 3D trees, you know, f photosynthesis. You put any of these games on the table, I'm going to want to at least look at them. All right. Now. This one, I feel like, is going to be in most people's anticipated, probably in top five, a lot of people's top five, and that's Ankh. It's like the finisher of the trilogy from Eric Lang, his games along w uh, with ones we love like Rising Sun. Mm -hmm. And it's this one, if you can't guess from the name, is an Egyptian-themed one. The one thing I really love is at a certain point, the people in last place become a team. And sort of fuse to become a god, a new god. Yeah, this one's going to be huge for sure. Uh, can't wait to try it out. Uh, it's not not the only game Simon's putting out this year by a long shot, but by far the one that we're most excited about playing. Uh, next up, we have Ascension Tactics, which is a new miniatures game based on the Ascension deck building game. And I think what's interesting about this one is that it's not just purely like uh, a different genre using the same name and theme and lore. It really is still kind of a blending now of still a deck building game as well as a miniatures tactics game. So uh, very curious to see how exactly those two things blend together. Now here's an exciting one because Plat Hat Games is bringing back Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Born with their Ashes Reborn line. Uh, this was the, cl not collectible, but uh, expandable card game. That's the term they use, uh, where you're all different Phoenix Born with magic powers. It's like a combat card game mixed with dice for your energy pool. And it was dead. Now it is back. Uh, they are launching it through this online subscription service with Team Covenant. So... Pretty awesome that it's coming back. Fans of that series, I think, are very, very happy. And I was one of those fans of, of the original game. So I'm happy to see this back in the world. Happy to see Plaid Hat working on something that I know they're passionate about. Yeah, I heard a lot of really positive things about the new changes on Twitter. So that's a good sign. It means that they didn't just make some ignoring rules that don't really matter. or People don't like, I want to play the first edition. It sounds like this one really is a step up. Yeah. Uh, Atlantis Rising was a big game that we kind of missed the boat on, mm -hmm. I guess, pun intended. <laughs> I don't know. There's a boat in water. Uh, but they have a new expansion coming out called Monstrosities. This one adds some new stuff into the mix, including Medusa. Uh, so you, if you want to face off against Medusa, you're going to need to pick that one up. I think, am I wrong? Didn't, aren't you, didn't you finally back and aren't you maybe getting some Atlantis Rising stuff? I backed this. I missed on the first one. I remember that was part of my regrets for one of our end of year videos. So when I saw this, I'm like, I'm not going to miss out this time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so we'll get to, we'll get the chance to try that out. Uh, next is Arceus, which is another Egyptian themed game. It's minis, it's dungeon crawling, it's a campaign. <laughs> uh, that That's what it is. Those, there are all a lot of things that a lot of gamers really like, and that's why it's on this list. It just one of, I think, two ancient Egypt games on our list. So I don't feel too oversaturated. I feel like there's room for these to coexist. <laughs> also want to mention Blinks, the Blinks System is a fun series of games that use these cool electronic magnetic pieces that link together and teach each other new games. We've talked about them in the past. Uh, they have a variety of games that come in each set and you can uh, mix and match with different sets for different combinations. Some of them are multiplayer, single player, competitive, cooperative. Uh, they just had a new Kickstarter not too long ago for a whole set of new games that will now be releasing in 2021. And I'm just interested to see how they work because I think they always have some cool new experimental games, uh, often the more abstract side. Sometimes they're dexterity based. Different designers work on all of them. So it's exciting to see what they come up with. Another really cool one, though, that I believe you have the previous sets in the series, most of them at least, is Bristol 1350. This is a game that takes place during the Black Plague. Each person, player will have wagons with characters in them, but some of those characters could secretly be carrying the plague. It's up to you to decide who gets to come with you, who doesn't, and try to make it to the end first. 
yeah, they all do. They do this cool social deduction thing in different ways. And uh, I've been a fan of their previous games, like you said. And this one, you know, maybe, maybe a little, hopefully by the time this comes out, we'll be able to look back and, and laugh about trying to avoid the plague <laughs> as you know, opposed to it being I honestly <laughs> wasn't thinking about that until you said it now. I was all in board games and excited. And then... <laughs> yeah, sorry, I brought you back into reality. It's 2021 now. It's 2021. What's next? Everything will change. Well... We're going to take a look now at Burgle Bros 2, the casino capers. Burgle Bros is a game when you're trying to work together to successfully complete a heist. In this one, you'll be at a casino with actually a dual-layered system. And I can't remember if this is part of the course effort expansion, not expansion, like a deluxe version, but you'd actually level the casino and having two floors so you can actually like move your pawn or p- miniature up or down, which seemed really cool. The first one we had a lot of fun with. Yeah, it's, it's got that, you know, like the Ocean's Eleven sort of lighthearted vibe that you would want. And I think it does come in the standard version that I wasn't sure. I couldn't thing. remember. <laughs> uh, I could be wrong, too, but I think so. But yeah, I'm excited to see how that works. It's like a maybe a more streamlined kind of sequel with some improvements to it. So that should be good. This is one I think I missed out on. I don't remember either of us talking about, and that's a Burn Cycle. This is a programming game when you're all robots trying to break into corp- human corporations and mess around and stop the CEOs because they're evil and enslaving you. You can skip over steps, but you're really trying to keep to your burn cycle to help not only help out the team, but also make sure you keep to your directive. Yeah, this one I thought looked really cool. Yeah, I, I wasn't on our radar, but I do enjoy programming games and the sci-fi theme sounds really awesome. Another one I know is very interesting for us is Cataloop. I think it was just announced or talked about. And this is part of a series. And the first one is where you were a criminal coming back because you were exiled unfairly, question mark, and it's time for you to get your revenge. So this is sort of like a book that have codes on it and also like texts that you may need a certain way to look through them, like one of those uh, little plastic red windows. Yeah, it's obviously inspired by point-and-click adventure PC games that looks colorful, looks lighthearted. Uh, I'm always interested to see how, you know, a new take on that genre uh, whether it's with an app or not with an app, it's a book, cards, whatever they do it. I think there's fun ways to explore that. And this one I really like because it was a game I backed, and that's Canvas. This is a game that uses clear cards similar to Mystic Veil vale to make these beautiful art pieces. You know, you have background slots versus more on front pieces and objects. It just looks like one of those cool games when you sort of make these really interesting things. And I feel like I'm going to have more fun with the journey than simply just trying to be the winner. Yeah, looks beautiful. Love those beautiful card games with art in them. <laughs> uh, next, we got Carnegie, based around Andrew Carnegie, the guy who made The Hall. Uh, this is from the same designer who brought us Black Angel, among others, uh, inspired by, I don't think you're playing as Carnegie, I don't think you're all different Carnegies, but in, sort of inspired by uh, his life and his accomplishments. Uh, seems like a, a cool little Euro game with an interesting theme. Now, the crew was a big game this year. It was up getting awards, and they have a new version of it coming out. This one is called Mission Deep Sea. Uh, same basic premise wherein you have, it's a trick-taking game, but it's cooperative, and you're trying to accomplish various missions. Uh, now, instead of in space, you're all in the deep sea or in submarines, you're diving, uh, which is, of course, making communication difficult. And that's a big part of this game, is what you're allowed to let other players know or not allowed to let them know. This one has a whole new set of missions. I don't know exactly. I think there may be some other changes to the cards and things, but I don't think we've really seen those in detail yet. But um, this is one I would love to play. Also, if and when I ever get the chance to actually play through all of the original The Crew with a group of human beings. <laughs> Darkest Dungeon is getting a board game. Of course, this is a roguelike video game. And now it's got a big roguelike campaign style uh, board game that you can play through as well. Fantasy dungeon crawler with minis. Uh, you you know the deal. You know the drill <laughs> at this point. I'm excited to maybe try the actual video game. and Maybe that will make me more interested in this board game version. Uh, but a lot of people I know are fans. Another follow-up game now is Dawn of Madness, which is sort of the successor to Deep Madness, which is another kind of dungeon crawler-esque uh, mini heavy, a little bit uh, Lovecraftian, I would say. And Dawn of Madness, I know, is one that you're looking forward to because I assume it's gonna be it's gonna be more of that and bigger and better. And a lot of it is your character will like evolve and like 
change and you have to fight your own dark reflections. It seems to be more like Silent Hillish, I guess. Mm. I mean, I'm trying to pull analogies here, but no, it's something cool to good. check out. <laughs> and they even sort of hinted out with some special minis beforehand that you can bring in the, to this one, like the dark reflections of the deep madness characters. So it, it's one I'm curious and think that looks really cool. So on the lighter side, we have Dice Miner, which is about dwarves, and it is a dice drafting game. We got the chance to play a prototype copy, and it's really cool, this one, because the dice are arranged on an actual physical 3D mountain, and how they're arranged determines which ones you're allowed to take. A lighter, uh, simpler kind of game, but with a, a cool sort of gimmicky uh, idea to it that I enjoyed. This next one, I don't know as much about, but I think it sounds awesome really cool and it's dive the idea is you're all divers and you're simultaneously playing and there's these see-through cards you're going to stack up to have either like sharks manta rays or turtles and the idea is you're diving underwater and you're trying to see how deep you can go you have air tiles you're trying to predict correctly where the manta rays turtles and sharks are going to be without taking penalties it's the idea of like yes when you look at water usually you can see down but you're really not sure how deep something actually is yeah, this is from the same team that did Magic Maze, which is an equally kind of innovative concept. And uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to this. And I think, yeah, there's a lot that you can do with those transparent layers in games. So oh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see that. I don't th I th definitely think we have not hit the saturation point for that. <laughs> I just hope that there aren't too many cars left out with these games in the sun because I've heard that it can melt them. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. Another board game based on a video game is Divinity Original Sin, the board game. We actually got the chance to play this last PAX. It's a heavy campaign story game, just like the video game series. And it had this really interesting method of going to different locations that could become unlocked or locked, depending on how you what time you go there. And of course, different paths you can choose of how to deal with certain quests which could change the way things end up and how range attack works it was it was a very clever interesting way for what we've seen in this starting to become a very saturated area these heavy campaign games yeah i, I really liked the the idea of this one the like you said the different the way you could attack was really innovative it really felt like a role-playing game but in a smart way adapted to the tabletop i'm, I'm pretty excited to, to try more of that one i think it was really good Dominant Species Marine. Dominant Species was one of the first games we ever played. A very heavy, long game all about trying to make sure that your group of animals are the dominant species. And if you haven't guessed in this title, this is an updated version based on marine creatures. A follow-up that we've been anticipating for a long time. Uh, that, that game is great, but it's definitely, it kind of shows its age a little bit. I think it is from uh, an older design sensibility. So I'm hoping that marine uh, streamlines it a little bit, makes it more approachable so it's not as scary to, to show uh, to new people perhaps. Next up, we have the Emerald Flame. This was another Kickstarter pick starter that was the, these really cool puzzles and intricate design. The art is gorgeous and a lot of cool, weirder kinds of components and wheels and stuff going on for codes and whatnot. <laughs> Moving on, we've got Endless Winter. Please don't let this winter be endless. Endless Winter Paleo Americans. This is a game when you all play as Paleo Americans in this really clever style of like gathering resources, doing different things and cards with different abilities that not only do actions, but also during an eclipse phase, decide player order, which can really matter. If you like those kinds of longer, heavier games to take a look at. Uh, if you want longer, heavier games, boy, have I got one for you. <laughs> Next is Europa Universalis, The Price of Power. Uh, based on a video game, which was based on a board game. I don't know, there's a, there's a storied history to this series, but uh, we are coming up uh, hopefully this year to see the newest version of it, which will be somewhat streamlined, but still a deep, heavy area control, uh, global domination type of game. Uh, we, we got to play a little bit of an early copy of this a while back. And even, even in that early stage, I mean, it's a... Oh, it, 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 there's a lot going on. So this is one, if you, if you like a game that's going to really make you think over the course of a weekend, maybe, <laughs> this is the one you want to take a look at. Final Girl is a new one from Van Ryder Games. 
their sort of new version of the hostage negotiator system. It's a solo game where you are the final girl in a horror movie and there's different genres so you could play in more of like a slasher movie or a, a supernatural, para, uh, paranormal, poltergeist kind of movie, all different types of sets you can put into it. Uh, and a big fan of Hostage Negotiator and their other games and love the theme of this one. Now, Flamme Rouge is a pretty popular bicycle racing game with a really clever uh, take on, on that, on the racing genre where you're trying to uh, get rid of cards because the more you get, it represents how exhausted you are. Now they have a new expansion coming out, World Tour, and this one introduces... A campaign mode essentially to Flam Rouge, just what we were all hoping for. But you know, now you can kind of connect uh, like different races together as one grand world tour set of races, if you will. Uh, and so that game is a lot of fun. If you're, you know, you want a different way to mix things up, this is probably one that you'll be interested in. I think every game needs a campaign mode now. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's what's happening, it's what's going to happen pretty soon. Now, Flourish is another new one from Starling Games. We got to play it, and it's all about building a beautiful garden, uh, choosing which cards you want to place into that garden, while also keeping an eye on what other players are doing. You can also play it in multiple different ways. You could do a competitive or cooperative, uh, a cool, beautiful, lighter game that was a lot of fun to play. I really wish that we had the chance to do it when there wasn't a pandemic going on so we could have a larger group because all drafting games like that in particular. I love these. I'm starting to see more games where you draft cards, not just I'm taking my card and passing it, but you also give cards to your opponents. So there's to like the left and right. So there's a lot more to simply just or passing to the left or passing to the right. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. that uh, it's a fun mechanic. I hope we get to see uh, grow a bit more. Now here is one that's pretty under the radar, but I wanted to include it because we got the chance to play the web version of it and had a lot of fun. This is a game called French Toast. And it's a word guessing game where you are trying to get players to guess a word based on the starting clue of French Toast. And they have to ask, is it more like French Toast or is it more like a teapot or something. And you keep going like that until you eventually, eventually branched off into different words. And there are different clues you can give. Like you can say this thing is kind of, uh, maybe it's shiny or maybe it's a happy thing or a sad thing. A really different kind of a take on the word guessing genre that I'm a fan of. I think this has the potential to be, you know, if you like games like code names or Decrypto, that style of guessing game, one you shouldn't sleep on. It's one of those games where you just, afterwards, you're like, what was it? And you just explain, you all laugh together. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we all need. We all need some laughter. <laughs> yes, we do. Now, next two are both have Frost in it. So you can probably <laughs> guess them. But first off is Frosthaven. Everyone wants this. It's got to be number one. It's the successor to Gloomhaven. I don't know if I can need to say anything more than that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be huge. It's going to be very popular. I'm looking forward to playing it. Uh, I think everyone on the planet pretty much is. So yeah, that's true. Frosthaven. Even people who've never played a board game before. I think they probably are. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play Frosthaven, but I don't know what it is. I never, they, they like get a signal in their dreams <laughs> that they need to play it like the stand. Uh, yeah, it's a juggernaut. Oh yeah. The other one though is Frostpunk, the board game. We got to play a digital version of this board game, which is sort of funny considering it started off as a video game. This is sort of a eternal winter kind of deal. And you're going to be forced to make some difficult decisions in order to keep your people alive, whether that's allowing child labor, or putting sawdust in your food. It, it's very interesting. And I'm sure anyone who likes those survival society games should take a look at this. Yeah, a lot of uh, complex game about exploration, resource management, and working together with people. Uh, interesting, thought-provoking kind of a game. This next one, though, I had no idea about until we made this list. Uh, Jonathan was the one who showed me. It's called Golem. This is based off where golems actually come from, from the uh, Judaism myth. And I look at it, and it looks so cool and doesn't feel like there's some – every now and then you see a game that's based on a religion. I feel like it's not done in a very well-thought-out way. It's just like quickly just because. This feels like it really dives into it and gives it the treatment that the that the uh, religion and the the would you call it a myth of 
the, yeah, the golem? The myth, I'm not sure if that's legend. Re- that that it deserves. <laughs> yeah, folklore, whatever whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is just looks really cool. I mean, I, I haven't I don't know of any other games that take place primarily in a synagogue, you know? And you're like going around building golems and sending them to do your bidding. Just a really neat idea that we something very different. Finally, a game to rival the dreidel. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Finally, have something else to play on Hanukkah now. <laughs> But moving on, uh, another big one I think that's definitely in Jonathan's top 10 is Growl, Madness, and Plagues. We got to preview this. It's a really fun take on the werewolf hidden roll deduction game. And these new cards just add so many crazy new mechanics to it. You know, more things to mix it up, weird spells and crazy things you have to do. Uh, Always excited for more Growl stuff. Cherry-picked games, which got... On both of our lists, in fact, Jonathan's number one for 2020 with Far Away has a game coming out titled Hair of the Dog. I'm going to tell you now, you don't need to hear about the rest of the lists we have. This should have actually been the only game we talked about. It's going to be game of the year. It is about trying to pet the most dogs. You and your friends are in a dog pub. It's a pub where people can bring their pet dogs, but none of you have pet dogs. Ergo, you need to pet all the other dogs. Do you need to know anything else? <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a really cute, uh, funny idea, and I, like you said, we both loved Far Away, so I'm very much anticipating what see what their next game is. Uh, they also have, I think, they're going to do a Kickstarter for new Far Away stuff, but I don't know if that's going to make it for 2021. But they are a company to look out for at least. Look, I mean, this one's great, but obviously, if this does well, we got to get like you know the Cat Cafe version. Then, you know, like the owl, ca- you know how they have all those cafes in Japan. We just need board game versions of that now. They have an idea. owl cafe? Oh, yeah, there are owl cafes. <laughs> all right, sure. I don't, why should I be surprised by anything <laughs> at this point? Uh, next up is one called Hell, The Last Saga, based on Norse mythology. Uh, and th- this one is described partially as like an action, but also a survival horror game, which I find intriguing. And yes, it's another big campaign game and yes there's a bunch of minis and all kinds of monsters to fight against but it's a big one it's it's we have to mention it it's worth noting it does look cool there's more coming up uh like next we have hero quest hero quest you might be thinking that game came out why 25 30 years ago but this is the new edition of it from hasbro that was crowdfunded on their own platform and it, from what we've seen, seems to be pretty true to the original Hero Quest, but with updated art, maybe uh, you know some new tweaks to the rulebook, as well as there's a new uh, campaign expansion that's coming along with it. So if you are a fan of that Hero Quest game, one to look for. Although another one that is going to be pretty expensive and possibly hard to find, depending on how things go. Next we have Hyperspace. This is a sci-fi competitive asymmetric combat game from Sandy Peterson, uh, who did Cthulhu Wars, among many other things. And what I thought was cool about this one is it kind of sounds like it might be sort of the Cthulhu Wars of sci-fi. It's that kind of thing where everyone has their own unique alien race and with different powers and things, and you're going at it trying to be the supreme victor. (laughs) Uh, And I, I know you're a big fan of Sandy Peterson, so I think this is one to look out for. I know he really tried to make uh, a bit more weirder, unique aliens. And if you're curious about him, he actually did videos uh, like explaining, could a fungus be space traveling? Yes, I believe they could. And like, goes into all the, like, I don't even think he means it. Just his interesting idea of why this could be a intergalactic, you know, conquering species. Yeah. Now, a while ago in our video, I mentioned that there were two ancient Egypt games. I was, I was mistaken. There is a third. <laughs> And that's this one. <laughs> I was I, I jumped the gun a little bit. Uh, we have Kemet, Blood and Sand, the new edition of Kemet, uh, a game we really love for Matago. It's an uh, area control uh, combat game using aspects of ancient Egypt. And this is a whole new edition that reworks a lot of the rules, balances things. Really enjoyed the original one. There was a bit of a kerfuffle involving a Cthulhu expansion, which they fixed, so it's not Cthulhu-themed. But as bonuses, there are Cthulhu reworks, I guess, of what they have. So if you still want to add Narlatep to your game, you can. Yeah. Uh, next one is Lander. 
Another one that might be uh, not on everybody's radar, we got to play a preview copy and it was funded on Kickstarter. And this is a, a space colonization game. And it sort of on the surface is uh, it's kind of like a Catan style thing, uh, but it's there's a lot of different systems involved. You'll be recruiting different uh, people for your crew that all have very unique powers that do different things. This is a, a very intricate but fun sci-fi game with multiple kind of hybrids of different mechanics and genres built into it. Uh, definitely worth checking out if any of that sounded cool to you. Now, this next one, doesn't need a preview because it's an expansion to already a well, well-funded and uh, expanded upon line. And that's Marvel's Legendary. This is the deck-building game, and of course, there are going to be some, plenty of new expansions. The big one to point out right now, I believe, is Annihilation. It sounds like, from what I've heard so far, that the Fantastic Four will actually be their own group. You'll have one group that's all of them, with Galactus as another and possibly the Heralds as another group. I think that these are those are those are very cool ideas. Definitely looking forward to that. Also, they got a Doctor Strange one in the works, another X Men themed one, and then they have the uh, live action based Guardians of the Galaxy one, which I'm not as excited about, but <laughs> still yeah. some still some cool things there. And next, we got Legends of Sleepy Hollow. This is one we did a preview for a long, long time ago. I'm pretty sure I don't have my beard. And this one is. A campaign-like game. You're solving the mystery of what's been happening in Sleepy Hollow, and you're going to, of course, go up against the Headless Horsemen themselves. This one's been in the works for quite some time, and I'm hoping it does finally come out this year. Yeah, it was a really fun idea. You know, it's a... You know, if you've played any other like story-based dungeon crawlers, again, you you kind of know what to expect. But it was a cool theme and a cool narrative. So I don't know what's going on, but hopefully that finally hits release at some point in 2021. For all the two-player games out there, we've got Mall Pink. This is actually a standalone expansion, I guess you would say, for Skulk Hollow. The first one still follows the same idea. The idea is one person is going to play as a giant beast, a kaiju more or less. Uh, the other person plays as an animal tribe in the Skulk Hollow is a fox. In this one, it's going to be bears. They can be mixed and matched, so you can play as whatever creatures you want. And the goal of the player controlling sort of the tribe is actually to sort of climb up the monster and deal damage to them there while the other one's trying to wreak as much havoc as possible. We really enjoyed it, and I love the premise. You know, it, if you've ever played Shadow of the Colossus, it's, it's that as a game. Yeah, the original one sort of alluded to this larger world outside of Skull Hollow, so I think it's a neat idea that they're expanding on that with different games. And the next one, Maracabo de Lisboa, which is going to be pronounced something much better if it doesn't come out from my mouth, <laughs> is a game when you are all working in sort of a marketplace and you really have to manage your food stalls and try to line them up to get the most money to get be the one who's most profitable. It's from uh, Vital uh, Lacerda, whose name I probably mispronounced too, but uh, <laughs> everybody loves him. He's done a lot of great games. One that I feel like we have slept on a little bit. So, uh, But this one looked neat. looked like a, a, a cool idea for a Euro game with a lot of player interaction uh, in one main area that I thought was intriguing. Merchants of the Dark Road is our next one, and I find this to be a very interesting one because you play as caravan owners, and you're all about trying to get goods from different places, but, you know, you got to try to survive the, the trip. So it's all about gathering the right resources and making sure you make it there. Uh, it sounded like a cool idea. I like the idea, of course, of not necessarily being the hero of the fantasy setting, but the ones who have to supply them with stuff, but it's still it being perhaps just as perilous for you to do so. Yeah, you're not the guy who gets to wear the armor. You're just carrying it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the long-awaited follow-up to Midara Unintentional Malum Act 1. It's finally coming out Act 2. Is there an Act 3 as well? There are three acts, yes, I believe okay. that's Okay, <laughs> so again, maybe we'll see Act 2 and 3 in 2021. Uh, and finally, this uh, Kickstarter will be fulfilled, we think. This is another big dungeon crawly campaign style game. This one takes more of its inspiration from anime style storytelling. And we definitely enjoyed our time with it. And we've been waiting to kind of see the, the, the full the full set and how these things connect together and how satisfying the overall arc is of that campaign. So it's a, it's a big one, another very big one. <laughs> another cool thing to keep an eye out with this is one, there is going to be an upgrade 
upgrade, maybe a rod of pack is actually the word I think it was used for it, to fix some of the issues in the first one, including some overpowered cards, which I'm sure I'm going to ignore because I'd rather be overpowered. <laughs> but <laughs> the other thing is, if I, I can't remember the name of the app, but they're taking, the, I believe that the entire campaign, all acts, are going to be part of this app where they read it out, like you buy them. Gloomhaven and Frosthaven, I'm pretty sure, are on there too. So for the heavy campaign games that you want to hear narrated to you, this is maybe something a way that you can play that so everyone doesn't have to read from the book or, in my case, watch me stumble through a sentence without being able to pronounce a word. People love that, though. That's one of my favorite parts of Game Night. Uh, next, we have Namiji, which is the follow-up to Tokaido, a standalone successor. Uh, it's similar mechanics. If you've played Tokaido, it has a thing where uh, the person who is in last gets to move so if you move fewer spaces you might take multiple turns in a row uh, this one has a lot of new sort of little mini games depending on where you stop you might be trying to go fishing uh, you might be like collecting things that you're trying to match in different ways or fit in different shapes a lot of fun a very zen kind of game with a lot of different activities going on a good good variety of stuff that we got to try out a little bit of uh, it was supposed to come out last year but hopefully it will be released this year i mean big fan of the game both when we played the demo and its previous version so i'm in leader games is putting out oath chronicles of empire and exile uh you are in an ancient world you know competing for power and influence that old story but what makes this one unique is that it is an ongoing constantly evolving legacy style game but it is one in which you don't need to have the same group at the table each time you play. In fact, there's a solo mode. You could do a solo game and the next week play with two people and the next week play with three different people. And the board and setup will be constantly evolving uh, that will change each time that you play and it will not be left in the same place it began. But you don't have to play it in any order. You can reset it at any time you want. Very innovative, very cool idea. This, you know, Leader Games has a lot of great stuff and I can't wait to see how this one turns out. I'm very curious how it's going to play out because it's not exactly like a, a, your usual campaign or something, you know, but it still has the carryover effect. So maybe you could scratch that same itch that the uh, campaign or legacy games do without, you know, being them. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, but if you do still like that traditional kind of campaign game, another huge one we've been talking about for a long time is Oathsworn Into the Deep Wood. Uh, giant grimdark fantasy adventure co-op campaign game. Got a cool system where you're rolling dice or drawing cards in order to uh, do battle with creatures. There's also a separate narrative section where you're traversing on a map and having encounters with NPCs who maybe you'll even recruit to fight alongside you. A lot of very cool stuff. We've talked about this one a lot. It was huge on Kickstarter. Cool minis, cool secrets and things we don't know about yet in later chapters. So it will be very gratifying to finally sink our teeth into this one. Oh, by the way, we are also on promo cards in the game. So if you backed it, you might see our faces when you play. <laughs> they are pretty cool. And, you know, if you want to know more, like we said, we have plenty of videos on, including an interview with the designer. I, I will say... I feel 2020 was the year we let go of the guide wire in the deep forest and we're like, yeah, we can just walk around. There's nothing dangerous here. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe so. Maybe we need to get back on that track. We'll see if this game will help us out with that. Another interesting take on this genre is Perseverance Castaway Chronicles. And this is the start of a series, potentially, which includes multiple different episodes and it's themed around kind of a prehistoric era with dinosaurs and the like and it's split up into multiple episodes so that uh, as you play them very different mechanics and different pieces and things will be coming into play uh, another unique idea that I think will be cool if it's successful to see how they continue that line how many episodes it gets or what different themes they bring to it but this one has dinosaurs so I think it's cool I was going to say, it has a very big plus of dinosaurs. Big plus. <laughs> very big. <laughs> Pocket Paragons is a much smaller game that, unfortunately, I think was meant to thrive in the 
pre-error, hopefully you'll do better this year, in which you do the, it's sort of these small, compact game of you fighting each other, sort of almost rock, paper, scissors, depending on how certain cards interact. But what's cool is the idea is they want to interact with other companies that make their own fighters to collect there. So if and when conventions start up again, you would actually visit around the different booths to collect all the different fighters. Yeah, uh, we, we got to try out a, a demo version of this one, and it's fast-paced. It's it's a fun, quick combat card game, if you like that sort of thing, and you know you want to be able to fit it in your pocket. This is one yep. maybe to look out for. <laughs> Hence the name, Pocket Paragons. That's what the name is for. The next game is Quest. This is, I guess you can call it a reboot almost, of the Resistance Avalon. This is a hit-and-roll game. And I, if this game comes out before it is safe for everyone to get around together, we will know we're in a simulation that is designed to torture Jonathan. <laughs> yes, I, I, I really hope to be able to play that game this year uh, at some point. But like you said, I love the resistance. And this sounds like, you know, they say that it'll complement that game, but it sounds to me like it might just outright replace it. Uh, a lot of similar mechanics, but... Streamlined, and uh, also there's a version that I back that actually comes with like an updated version of Avalon with new <laughs> art. So maybe I'll play them both. Maybe I'll never play either of them, but I'm excited to have them in my collection either way. Moving on, Railroading Challenge. We actually interviewed the creators about this and also, of course, got the chance to play it. It's a roll and write, which about building railroads and roads. Yeah, this is the, this is like the challenge. This is kind of the sequel to the original Railroad Inc. with new types of dice and some new tweaks and things. But yeah, if you like roll and rights, it's it's a classic roll and write. Mm -hmm. And of course, we don't have enough minis because if we talk about Kickstarters or board games, at least 50% of this list needs minis and we don't have enough. So we got Resident Evil 3, the board game. Of course, as you can guess, based on Resident Evil 3, lots of minis, lots of dungeon crawl, Everything you might want if you want those things. <laughs> yeah, heard mixed things about Resident Evil 2, the board game, uh, from Steamforged Games as well. But so I don't know. We'll see if they uh, can rectify some of the stuff people didn't like about that version of the game. But, you know, now that I'm a Resident Evil head, I'll, <laughs> I'll be excited to finally tear into those games at some point. Rocketman is a deck building game based on exploration and, to my disappointment, not about the song. You will, as you said, deck building the game, working on getting cards to help increase your exploration and reach the farthest stars. Uh, yeah, it's from designer Martin Wallace, so I think it's just worth talking about and noting for that alone. But it looks like a, a cool, another combo of deck building with a lot of other things going on. Um, it's supposed to, you know, it's like kind of like a space race sort of a thing. So, you know, a Martin Wallace space race scheme. That's 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 the selling point right there. So take a look I at mean, that. You know, if you just say the word deck building, I'm like, I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sea of Legends is another big one. And guess what? It's a campaign. It's <laughs> storytelling. It's, it's narrative based. This one is pirate themed. You're on the open seas, sailing around, uh, discovering, making discoveries in a new world. You know, it's another one of these games. I'm going to be honest with you. There's only there's only so many things you can say at a certain point. But I, I wish I said it earlier. I just wish we just have in the corner... Maybe this is retroactive. We'll have a campaign time account clock. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I think we could say there are pl enough campaign games out there, and I don't There's think we're enough. done talking about them. <laughs> There's enough for now, but pirates. It's got pirates, and that's that's a cool thing. I do like pirates a lot. Uh, now the Valeria series is one we've enjoyed in the past, and they have a new one coming up: Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. And this one you play as the baddies, the bad monsters trying to go after the good guys. And this is one we got to try out for ourselves and enjoyed it. I think just as much as uh, most of the other Valeria games. They're all pretty solid. It was very interesting. It was this dice building mechanic and deciding of like not just which dice you want for yourself, but how do you pick ones that are not as good for your opponent and stuff? It, it was a it was a nice surprise versus the one die engine building of the original Valeria King card kingdoms. Yeah, it's very different from any of the other Valeria games, really, with the exception of just the theme and some of the similar elements in the art and things like that. Uh, now, Sheol 
is another big miniatures game that was really popular on Kickstarter. And this is a cooperative game in this crazy world where these ter terrifying monsters are attacking and players are working together to try to stop them. And to me, the thing that drew me to this one is just those minis and the art and the design of these creatures is really creepy and spooky and cool. Uh, and apparently a lot of people agreed with me because, like I said, big minis game, this one was well well funded. A lot of people looking forward to it, I think. It was very interesting and involved out exploring from the center of town, but you had to make these paths of light, so it's not simply just walking around. So I think there's a bit more planning of how you explore, not simply just, should we enter this cave? It's things like yeah. that. So definitely something to keep an eye out for. Now, Sleeping Gods, this one I know a lot of people are very excited for. And yes, it is another narrative campaign-based <laughs> game. The thing that made me, uh, it makes me think this one seems a lot cooler than some of the other ones is it's meant to be very uh, non-linear. And as a group, you can decide when and how you want to leave the pages or the chapters of the current part of the book that you're in and explore something different. And then when you replay it, you might go to a totally different chapter and find something else. I seem very open. This is from uh, Ryan Laucat, another great designer. And I know a lot of people have been dying to play this one. So this year we will finally get that chance. I feel like a lot of campaign games we talked about too feel more like playing through Dungeons and Dragons, like in terms of an RPG story. This one feels more like Miss to me. I don't know mm. how, how better to explain it. Like you're more just exploring, I guess. I don't yeah. know why. But yeah, I think the exploration aspect is maybe a little more emphasized in this one, for sure. Uh, now, the next one's very interesting. It's called Soul Raiders. It's another campaign game. This one is from the designer of Splendor, uh, as among other games, but that's certainly his most famous, most successful work. In this one, players actually take their turns simultaneously. So depending on what decisions your party makes or whatever you want to call it, you might actually split up. You might explore different things uh, because you're just doing things all at the same time. Uh, and I don't know how exactly that's going to work in practice, but if successful, that could be a really cool thing that adds a lot of replay value and makes this one feel very different from a lot of these other types of fantasy games. Well, this is a game I'm very excited about for, and that's Super Wit. This is one we actually saw a very, very rough draft a while ago, and it is pretty much a superhero version of Wits and Wagers. The difference is not everyone just is their own player. There's actually going to be teams of superheroes and villains, and depending on which villain and hero you are, they're each going to have their own unique powers that help out in some way. We're big fans of, of Wits and Wagers, but this sounds like there's a lot more gamification to with the unique powers and the teams uh, for the simple just answer trivia. Yeah, love. that's one of my, maybe my favorite trivia game. Uh, I don't know that the competition is that steep, to be honest with you, <laughs> is, is Wits and Wagers. And uh, this is a cool t take on it that we've been wait anticipating for a long time. So hopefully it finally comes together this year. But if you're feeling a little peckish, maybe you want to check out Surrealist Dinner Party. In this, you are trying to throw a dinner party for different surrealists, whether they're musicians, writers, artists. And the goal is to fulfill their needs, which could be food, dessert, maybe compliments, or even some insults along the way. And trying to pass the tokens while also making sure your opponent is able to fulfill them. A beautiful game, a lot of great art. Uh, fun to play. This one comes from Resonim, who also just announced another one that's slated for this year called Ghost Writer, which we don't know anything about, but I love just that title to me it evokes like the idea of potentially, you know, is one player, is it like a Mysterium kind of thing? You're trying to give clues to people. Does it involve writing and ghosts? I'm intrigued to say the least because uh, I've enjoyed all of their efforts so far. If I find out that the name on the box actually design that game, I'm going to be very disappointed. They need a game, a ghost designer. <laughs> <laughs> they really should. Not based on the TV show, by the way. No, no, no relation. Speaking of TV shows, Tales from the Loop. It's an RPG that became a TV show and now is coming back to the tabletop as a board game. It's got some cool minis, to say the least, and the world itself is really cool. We actually, I think it's on our channel of us playing through some of the RPG, and I had a blast with that. Yeah, it's a cool world for sure. And, uh, you know, why not make it a board game? You know, no, no, no reason not to. So ho hopefully that turns out well because it is a beautiful setting. So I think there's, mm -hmm. there's some things you can explore there. Terraforming Mars is getting a dice game version, which you can probably guess from the extremely clever name, Terraforming Mars, the dice game. I mean, the board game is one of my favorites. I'm very curious to try this dice game. I mean, 
I don't expect it to be like, this is as good as the board game in terms of its level. It feels like one of those ones, the smaller version, but I'm, it could still be a blast. Yeah, it's it's a, it's not one I expected to see. It's a, it's an interesting choice, but Terraforming Mars is a pretty long game, so it would be pretty cool if this one manages to take that experience and distill it into a shorter time. From from what I have seen of like early uh, pictures of it, it, it looks you know relatively close to Terraforming Mars, the board game. I don't think it's just like we took that theme, but it's a very very simple dumbed down game. Uh, it seems a little bit different than that. So that's a weird one, but intrigued. I, I, I'm more than happy to be surprised, you know. It, but moving on, Townsville Tussle. Speaking of surprises, actually, this is one of those games that I like. I see on Kickstarter, I'm like, oh, it looks cool, but I don't expect it to be very big. But I hear a lot of talk about it. The idea of the game is it's really got that aesthetic of the old cartoons we used to see in the black and white, you know, what Cuphead pulls from as well. And the sheriff has died, so it's up to you to get the big baddies. You're going to go through multiple bosses until you fight the final big bad. And, of course, along the way, you'll be getting different upgrades. And because of that art style, it's not your usual, like, plasma gun or great sword. You know, it's going to be fitting with more of that theme and stuff, With makes it stand out a little bit more. Yeah, I thought this one looked really cool. I mean, I mean, min- you should have known it has minis in it. It's going to be a huge hit. I mean, if I say <laughs> Kickstarter... <laughs> probably means there's minis. I mean, uh, it's more of yeah. a shock if there isn't. <laughs> yeah, well, that's every game on our list. So, so yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, the art style looks really great. It seems like a fun one. Hope- hopefully it has substance to, to go along with the style because the style is really great. Twilight Struggle is a classic two-player head-to-head game. And now they have a new version of it. It's called Red Sea Conflict in the Horn of Africa. And it is a standalone smaller version of Twilight Struggle, similar idea, but allows you to, you know, play that, play out that sort of a game in a quicker time. It also is an expansion, so you can actually mix and match from cards between this and the original Twilight Struggle board game. So if you are just interested in that deeper experience, you can use these cards to expand that game as well. Obviously, this is a big deal. Uh, You know, Twilight Struggle is a big deal. So uh, we'll see if, I wonder how worth playing that card game version will be by itself uh, or if we'll prefer going back to just the original. Ultimate Werewolf has a new version coming out from Bezier. Ultimate Werewolf Extreme. This is another new take on this uh, social deduction hit and roll game, classic game. Of course, it's got all kinds of new roles and identities and things for the different villagers to play as in addition to the werewolves. What really intrigues me about this new version of it that makes me excited is this one comes specifically paired with an app, and the app has all kinds of new rules meant to make the moderator's job easier, including, for instance, you take pictures of everybody and have their faces so that in your app you'll be seeing who is assigned to which role and gives you uh, more power over you know maneuvering them and keeping track of who is doing what at any given time. I think that idea sounds really cool and uh, could be a fun new addition that makes this game just a lot easier to play. I am just imagining flipping through all the silly faces people make whenever they take a photo. Well, I, I guess I don't want to play it with our group, if that's, what, <laughs> if that's where it's headed. Um, one that uh, we also got to pl- preview, this is Uprising, Curse of the Last Emperor. This is a big old area control uh, battle game. Each player has their own unique faction with very different units, and there's going to be different types of bosses that come into play. And when, while you explore the world, new hexes are going to be coming up. You can get new spells and cards and abilities and encounter enemies that have all kinds of special traits. When I first saw it, the idea of a cooperative asymmetrical war game, I'm like, how did they pull that off? And they do. It's really cool because the two NPC factions there and your goal is to try to get all your score points by the end above them. It works really well and it's really fun, you know, and they definitely feel asymmetrical with how they work and deal with it. So you're going to have a lot of different strategies depending on which group you're playing with. Now, Critical Role is a big hit in the RPG world and they are founding a new publishing company called Darrington Press. They're putting out a few different games this year. First one we're going to see is Ukotoa, which is about players on a ship trying to battle off the sea monster Ukotoa, which I believe that one does come from the Critical Role lore. Is a game all about trying to be the last man standing on a boat that's being sunk by this giant creature. 
So I'm curious to see how this goes and how they deal with just doing the mechanics also. Because, I mean, yes, they have the lore, but will because I feel like a lot of games are like, we, we focus on deck building companies and publishers. So to see them really try to spread out and try to do different things. I hope each one is uh, worth playing besides just being a fan of the series. Finally, we have one last game. It is another game based on Vampire the Masquerade. <laughs> this one is Chapters. The other Vampire the Masquerade games we've seen have been more, um, standalone is not the right word, more contained uh, singular board game experiences. This is taking more influence directly from the role-playing roots of this series. Uh, it is a, an ongoing campaign style game wherein you are uh, going through multiple chapters and uh, finding out different, uh, you know, vampires and their lives and uh, how things go from generation to generation. A really cool, unique idea. I think I've enjoyed all the ones we've played so far, but I might be still most interested in this one because it does seem, it's obviously more suited to this genre and this theme because that's how the theme got started. So uh, I think this one's going to be cool. Yeah, I mean, it's hard not to be attracted to it because it was designed as a world to live in in an RPG. So it's one of those things where it's hard not to want to do the campaign. So I think that's the big takeaway for 2021, as it has been in years past, but it's been progressively getting more and more like that is, Everything's from Kickstarter and everything's a campaign game and everything has minis. But this year, more than ever, I don't know how we are ever going to have time to like play all these different campaign games, let alone get a group together. I mean, that's a different discussion, <laughs> but uh, it's still a very exciting lineup. And I think it's maybe a little even fuller than most years because things got pushed for various reasons from 2020. Um, you know, there's a lot of huge titles, but I think obviously the biggest ones... Descent and Frosthaven, I think I think those are the two that you, you got to pick out. But are there any in particular, just one or two that you're like super excited for, you think are the most, the biggest ones that probably most people are going to be talking about? I mean, it's what you said. I think Frosthaven is going to, no matter what happens, unless it's really bad by some, <laughs> I, uh, what's the opposite of a miracle? <laughs> yeah, a no, curse? I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, a catastrophe. I don't think it's going to happen. Catastrophe, yeah. You know, a critical uh, miss. Yeah, the critical miss somehow. But I think everyone's super excited for that. I mean, all these campaign games are, they're big for a reason. Everyone's excited for them. Um, Oathsworn is probably know. is another one that's probably going to be huge. I mean, that's one I'm not just because the the previews of uh, not previews the uh, promos of us, <laughs> but I, I had a lot of fun with that one, and, and I'm excited to actually get the chance to finish it. They didn't want to spoil everything for us, which is which is good. They know us well. <laughs> yeah, there's I mean, there's a ton of things to look forward to. So much we couldn't contain it all in one video, mm -hmm. uh, but you can let us know in the comments what you are most looking forward to in 2021. Is there somehow something we left off of this list <laughs> that you are hoping to get the chance to play? Or maybe just something from 2020 that you haven't had the chance to try out that you're still waiting to do. Let us know in the comments. Please, please, uh, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, or maybe there's even a Kickstarter you're looking forward to back that maybe won't come out until 2022. Whatever you're excited about in 2021, let's let's all think positive thoughts together and make this a good year, right? <laughs> of course. I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. This has been Roll for Crit. Catch the latest from Roll for Crit by liking and subscribing, and don't forget to support us on Patreon. Don't get analysis paralysis. Just click those buttons. Help us out.